Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about casting in Java. Here is our outline. First of all we will see what casting is and we will talk about implicit casting and explicit casting. So let's get started. What is casting? It is converting a data type to another type. So for example you can convert an integer to a double or a double to an integer. All right? Now let's talk about implicit casting. This type of casting happens automatically when converting from a narrower range data type to a wider range data type. So for example, if you want to convert from an integer to a double or a float or a long, then in this case, implicit casting can happen. So this will be done automatically. And this is because the double data type has a wider range than an integer. And the same applies on the float and the long. Another example, if you want to convert a float to a double, also in this case, we have implicit casting because a double has a wider range than a float. And also you can think about it like this. Implicit casting happens when we can convert from a data type to another data type without losing data. And I will give you an example in a little bit. Now let's talk about explicit casting. This type of casting doesn't happen automatically. It should be done by the programmer when converting from a wider range to a narrower range data type. So for example, if you want to convert from a double or a float or along to an integer then implicit casting cannot happen because for example if you want to convert a double to an integer you might lose some data in other words you are going to lose the decimal part of the number so java doesn't automatically does the conversion the programmer should tell java to convert a double to an integer even if data is going to be lost another example if you want to convert from a double to a float also, some data might be lost because a double has a wider range than a float and it is also more precise than a float. So Java will not do the conversion automatically and the programmer should do it. So when Java does the casting automatically, this is called implicit casting. And when the programmer has to do the casting himself, this is called explicit casting. So let's make everything clear by seeing some examples. Let's start with implicit casting. Suppose we have this code over here. We are assigning the double D1 to be equal to 4. And as you know, we have seen such thing previously, but we didn't go into the details. And over here, implicit casting is happening because as you know, four is an integer. So we are storing an integer inside a double, right? So Java will try to convert this integer to a double and it will do it automatically because a double can store an integer without any problems. So in this case, we have implicit casting from an integer to a double. Another example, if you try to store a float inside a double, Java will automatically convert the float to a double, right? And finally, have a look over here. If you try to store an integer inside a long, Java will automatically convert the integer to be long because a long can store an integer without any problem. So let's do a small summary. Implicit casting happens because, first of all, the range of a double is wider than an integer. So a double can store an integer without any problems. Also, the range of a double is wider than a float. So a double can store a float without any problem. And finally, the range of a long is wider than an integer. So a long can store an integer without any problem also. Now let's talk about explicit casting. Have a look at this code over here. We are trying to store a double inside an integer. And in this case, we will get an error. Also, if you try to store a long inside an integer, we will get an error. And if you try to store a double inside a float, we will get an error. So in this case, implicit casting cannot happen because First of all, the range of an integer is narrower than the range of a double. So Java will not convert 4.5 to an integer automatically. And this also applies to the long and the double over here. Because the range of an integer is narrower than a long and the range of a float is narrower than a double. Okay? So in this case, the programmer should tell Java to convert these values. So we are going to use explicit casting. So let's see how we can use explicit casting. It looks like this. First of all, we will open some parentheses and inside the parentheses we will put the new data type. And after that, we will have the expression that we want to convert to this data type over here. So have a look at this code over here. It is the same code from before, but now the programmer is telling Java to do the casting. So over here, we are telling Java to convert 4.5 to an integer. So Java will convert 4.5 to 4. So as you can see, there is data loss. We lost 0.5 and this is why implicit casting cannot happen. So as you can see, sometimes there is a possibility of losing data and this is an example over here. So this is why implicit casting cannot happen. So after 4.5 is converted to 4, it is now an integer and we can store it inside the integer i1 without any problems, right? Now let's see this over here. 
we are converting the 8 long to be an integer so the 8 long will be 8 and this is an integer and now we have no problems and we can store it inside i2 now let's see this over here we are converting 4.5 to be a float so 4.5 will be converted to 4.5f and after that we can store it inside the float all right now as you can see in this example and this example we don't have data loss and even if we don't have data loss java will not do the implicit casting automatically we should use explicit casting all right so let's make a small summary the type on the right side of the assignment operator should be the same as the type on the left side and when the types are different java will try to convert the type on the right side to be the type on the left side if the type on the left side has a wider range than the type on the right side java will do it automatically but if the type on the left side has a narrower range than the type on the right side the programmer should use explicit casting and this is by using parentheses and putting the data type inside all right now let's have a look at this note we have an integer i1 which is equal to 4.5 this statement produces a syntax error java will tell you that you are trying to store a double inside an integer all right and remember a double has a wider range than an integer and to fix that we are going to convert 4.5 to an integer using explicit casting let's see another note have a look at this code over here we have double d1 equals 4.5 plus 3 now every arithmetic operator should be applied between values of the same type and as you can see over here we have a double and over here we have an integer so 3 will be automatically casted to 3.0 and this is implicit casting because we can convert an integer to a double without any problems and after that 4.5 plus 3.0 will be calculated and stored inside d1 now you might be asking why did we convert 3 to 3.0 and we didn't convert 4.5 to 4 and this is straightforward we always convert to the stronger type so this is an integer and this is a double so we will convert the integer to a double all right so we always convert to the wider range type also we can use explicit casting we can tell java to add 4.5 to 3 casted to a double so 4.5 will be added to 3.0 and the result will be stored inside d1 okay now i want to tell you one more thing suppose we have this code over here double d is equal to 4.2 and int i is equal to int d this expression over here will be evaluated and then we are converting it to be an integer and storing it inside i so the variable d will not be affected we are just using the value of the variable d so i will be equal to 4 and the variable d will remain equal to 4.2 so the variable being casted does not change so this is it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video